if you're a really good leader, that's what you focus on. You focus on the employees. And so on a basic level, culture is, is some values and some behaviors. And, and you take those values and behaviors and you align them in the organization. And all of a sudden you got, most people will look outside and go, gosh, this company, this baseball team is really, really great now. What happened? Well, somebody came in and was a great leader and aligned some values and some behaviors and did a really great job on the structure and also the strategies, obviously. But really spent a lot of time with the employees, with the players, right? And, uh, you know, we we're talking about Jeff. Jeff speaks Spanish, and guess what a lot of the players speak? Yeah. So, you know, all of a sudden, you get a general manager that, that talks to the players and yeah. cares about the players, and the, and the players care about him. And then they, you know, they tell their friends, hey, you need to go work with, with you know, with Jeff and his team. And now Jeff, I think one of the policies is they have to speak Spanish, you know, at the, at the Astros, which is really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, you know, the players speak Spanish. Well, and I think it's what's interesting, too, that we often don't always think about in the sporting world, makes sense to us in the other workplace world, is that players talk to each other. Oh, just yeah. like employees talk to each other, right. right? And then they say, oh, come here, it's a great place, or don't go there, it's a bad place. Right, right, right. And you see that happen sometimes where players will give teams a, a discount on their contract because right. they really want to be part of that organization. Oh, yeah. Because it's a winning organization, or they heard it's a really good place to play or to be right right and that and you and that you can see it as a fan and watch it right um and you can kind of see it as a customer you know right. when you're you know going up to a, a chick-fil-a for example and everyone seems very happy to be there right. it's like this has a little bit different vibe than maybe another competitor down the street right 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 no and and chick-fil-a and southwest airlines they've got this magic formula and everybody looks in and says what are they doing that i'm not doing and what they're doing is the leaders are focusing on the employees and on culture because they know that if they have aligned values and behaviors in their employees, like it's my pleasure at Chick-fil-A, or three values that Southwest Airlines has, they've got three different, and I, when we do the architecture of culture in companies, we say pick three values, don't pick 10, pick three. So we, for you, it's three. That's, it's what, three. That's, what, that's what you tell people, three. Three or less. Okay. You can even have one. Yeah. Um, three or less because they can't remember 10. And you can't focus on 10. Yeah. The general rule is if you have one to three goals, you get one to three goals done. Four to seven, you'll get one done. And more than eight, you'll get zero. And again, human Okay, let me make sure okay. I got this right because that's a nugget of gold right there. So yeah. so one to three, you'll get, you'll, get, you'll get those done. You'll get one to three done, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then however many you pick, you'll get those done. If you four to seven, you'll get one done. Right. And then eight and eight to more? Zero. Zero because you can't focus on any of them because you've got you know too many and we're ambitious people human nature is going to take us to want to have a million goals and we can't if we want to be really effective if you want to be really good at the culture part pick three and make sure they're unique that they're you know because everybody picks generic one respect and trust and admiration whatever it is that you pick those are too generic do you have a favorite one Recently that you can think of it. Southwest the... Airlines has one and it's, they have three values that are very unique. Uh, one of them is warrior spirit and that's their management value. Mm. That's what I call the frontline value of get things done and warrior spirit. And then they have one called servant heart. And that servant heart one is the part that makes you grow and get better. And that's their coaching value. And then they have a leadership value, which is really cool and it's fun loving. And it's spelled L-U-V-I-N-G. And that's, you know, how, how uh, Southwest spells love, L-U-V. Yeah, that's our, that's their ticker symbol, too, on the it, stock exchange. Exactly, exactly. It's L-U-V. And guess how much, if you had invested, you know, in the, in the 60s, early 70s, $10,000 in Southwest Airlines, guess what you would have 30 years later? Uh, one million dollars. Twelve million. Twelve million dollars. Yeah, that's a lot. Dollars. <laughs> that's you know, a lot of money. It's funny you're talking about Southwest. I was doing a um, an executive ed session. This was a couple of years ago. We we're talking about culture, and one of the participants in the session told me this really funny story. He said, "All right, I, I he, we were talking about different companies." He, he said, "I fly Southwest all the time. I was on a Southwest flight last week, and I get on the plane. It's the last flight leaving the city, and the flight attendant comes on the intercom." And they, and, they, and they said this. They said, you know, this is our last flight of the day. We've had a really long day. We're really tired. We're supposed to hand out peanuts. 
but we're really too tired to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump all the peanuts here on, in the aisle, in the front of the plane, and we're gonna make a, and there's gonna be a big pile. And when the plane takes off and we go up, they're gonna roll, the, the, all the peanuts are gonna roll down the aisle. Just reach down and grab one as it rolls by. And that's exactly what they did. Wow, <laughs> how cool. <laughs> but you couldn't get away with that on maybe another airline. But Southwest, and he said everyone was just laughing and you know reaching below their seat, grabbing peanut bags as they were rolling by. Well, that's their fun-loving value. That's the leadership value because at the end of the day, we're human beings and, and we love to laugh and we love to play and we, we love to have fun. And so if the employees can have fun, the customers can have fun. And guess what? The customers come back because they had a good experience, they had a fun experience. And... So it's interesting, as you're talking today, it strikes me, you've said a couple things. You said you need, to, you need to focus on your employees and you need to focus on culture. But I'm hearing it more like you need to focus on your employees and, and, and it's almost like, um, I can't articulate it right, but it's almost those are not two separate things. You're almost saying you've got to pour into your employees and that's got to tie into that culture you're trying to do. So right. it's less about telling them what they need to do right. and more about kind of how can we care for them and how can they deliver that to the customer. Right, 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 right. Because if you care for your employees, your employees will care for the customer and the customer will keep coming back. So your money stream. And what most companies do is they focus on money first and then the customer, you know, we're customer focused. And then, you know, long third place is the employee. Problem is, if the employee interacts with the customer, especially the front lines of line employees, if you don't pay attention to them as a leader, then you're missing a huge revenue stream. That's where, um, you know, that's where companies like Chick Fil A understand that, because Chick Fil A earns about five million per store. Kentucky Fried Chicken earns a million. Mm. What's the difference? Well, they both sell chicken. They both deliver the chicken hot and ready to go, and and it's good chicken. The difference is the people. It's the employees, and the employees at Chick Fil A are, you know, trained in, in values yeah. and, and behaviors, and, and yeah. they spend and a lot of money and time on that. So does and their retention is twice the industry average, right? For a quick service, right? And they and also when you're have in the a best hot, customer hot, satisfaction. And like even I think about like the, the Chick Fil A near my house. You go there, and, and it's a it's a hot um, um, employee market or uh, employment market right now. Right. I mean, you could find a job pretty mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of the same folks who've worked in there who've been working there for the last year or two. Oh yeah. And and they're they're young folks. Right. So it's like they could find jobs somewhere else. Right.